श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु Seeker has to go 
and the last jnani bhakta is the destination to be reached. So it is for this purpose Bhagavad Katha is to be heard, studied, contemplated, reflected upon. See, if this thing does not happen, then we are going the wrong way. And therefore, in this Bhagavad, so many things are told. One of the most enchanting thing is the stories. See? Because everybody likes stories. And in those stories, we are told, once upon a time there was a king. This is a standard format of most of the stories. Once upon a time, there was a king. And he had uh, 100 wives. I think the family planning rule was not applied at that time. 100 wives. And naturally the problem, yet he did not have children. So he was lucky, therefore he did not have children. But then the people start thinking, oh, if we don't have children, how miserable we are. That is not the right understanding. I tell you my understanding about this phenomena. Those who are extremely lucky and blessed, they get married but they don't have children. So no problem. Little less lucky are those who have got only daughters, no sons. Do you know why? Because the daughters really take care of the parents before marriage. The sons don't. They are busy with their cricket and tennis. The daughters take care of the parents before marriage. And after marriage, they engage their husbands for the same job. <laughs> Therefore, next time you pray to the Lord, ask for the daughters, don't ask for sons. They are useless, good for life. <coughs> then little less lucky are those who have got both, 50-50. Six uh, sons and six daughters, 50-50. One cricket team. And those who are bichare, you know bichare, they have got only sons. And because of the sons, nobody has ever become happy in life. If you don't trust me, go to the books of history. The first book of history is Ramayana. Dasharatha suffered and died because of Ram. See? The second book of history is Mahabharata. Devaki Vasudev suffered even before the birth of Krishna. So when this is the story, when the God himself incarnates as your son, this is the tragedy the parents have to go through. Our children are like the pigeons. Do you think they will make you in life happy? So there was a king and he had hundred wives but no children. And then he goes to the Mahatma, Oh Mahatma Ji, please bless me to have children. Okay. Today I received one very good email, I sent it to Subhash. In India, those who are intelligent, extraordinary students, children, they get into engineering or medicine or accountancy. <coughs> Those who are, this is the first class students. Second class students, they go into the government jobs. The third class ones, they become the, you know, they get into politics. <laughs> and those who are um, dropouts from the school and college, they join the underworld. And those who are good for nothing, they become swamis. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the story goes, that his Mahatma was so frustrated because of this or that, ruled for hundreds and hundreds of years, and yet he did not discover the peace of mind. So, he handed over the kingdom to his son and went to the forest. 
Then what he did there? He did tapasya. For what? For knowing the truth. Now when we read these kind of stories, what is the moral of the story? See? The other day in Melbourne I told one story about the moral of the story. <coughs> you know in our mythology there is a story, this uh, Savitri and Satyavan, you know the story? Satyavan died, so Savitri got him back from the clutches of Yamaraj. And he again became alive. Before Savitri, <coughs> Yamaraj could do nothing. Woman empowerment. Moral of the story. This is a story, moral of the story. You may be saved from the death, but not from the wife. <laughs> So the moral of the stories in Bhagavad Mahapurana is, <clears throat> are we able to withdraw from the world with wisdom and understanding or we withdraw from the world through frustration and depression? When somebody is depressed, he has no interest in the world. Because of depression. The wise man who has a dispassion, he also doesn't have an interest in the world. But the difference between the two is, the first case is an unhealthy situation, the second one is the healthy situation. See, Ram Charit Manas tells, Dharmate birati jogate jnana jnana mocha prada veda vakana. If we are walking the righteous way of lifestyle, we must end up in dispassion. If dispassion doesn't happen, then we have not lived a right end of lifestyle. We may think that we are a good people, but it is not so. Therefore, <coughs> If we are walking the path of devotion, what should happen to us? So are we constantly going to the Lord and asking the things? You know? Do you know my observations and interpretations are totally different? Some of you may like, some of you may not like, but who cares? So one of the expression of the Lord is, He is standing there with this mudra. You must have seen here also. You know, he is Krishna here. Who is here? Yeah. Krishna. He doesn't care. Don't worry about it. <laughs> questions, so funny questions come. One person asked me, Swamiji, you are Krishna devotee. I said, any objection? No. Why Rama has Hanumanji all the time? Krishna doesn't have anything. What is the reason? I said, look here. The most miserable God is Rama. Because, you know, all the time the devotees eat his head. Ram, 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 Ram. Can you imagine? Your children come and constantly, you know, nag you. Mummy, 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 Mummy. Beta, kya chahiye? Mummy, Mummy, Mummy. What do you want, darling? Mummy, Mummy, give one. <laughs> In the same manner, non-stop. Ram, 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 Ram. He gets so frustrated and therefore Anumanji is handy. Anumanji is chew. <laughs> and then you get the problems of it. What about Krishna? You think that he is listening. Who is listening? He is playing his music. Okay. Therefore he doesn't have anything around him. So if we are real devotees of the Lord, what should happen to us? That is the topic we discuss for four days. See? You know, whenever we do anything, good or bad, that I is crystallized. Like when people step on the spiritual path, suddenly they start finding change in themselves. 
and they want certification from the world. Um, Swamiji, since I have stepped on this path, I have changed a lot. Achha, very good. But they want to tell, what changed? Oh, earlier I used to eat non-vegetarian every day. Since I came on this line, I take only alternate days. Evolution. Earlier I used to wake up at 10 o'clock. Since I came on this line, I wake up at quarter to 10. 15 minutes evolution. Then I remain. See, friends. And the whole sadhana is freedom from I, not freedom to the I. Unless this I disappears, we can never discover joy in our life. See, take few examples. One girl in Delhi, she got proper marks and all that. And uh, before the results were out, she was very frustrated. I don't know whether I'll get marks or not, I'll get admission or not, blah, 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 blah. Then she got required marks. Oh, I'm so happy. One moment. Then, but I will get admission or not in that college, in this college, like that. Then, after the frustration, she got admission in whatever college she wanted. After she got the admission, uh, within I will get scholarship or not. There is no end. See, friends, our happiness is so temporary because I is maintained. That is why, as a child, we think elderly people. Hum bhi agar bachche hote naam hamara hato dablu bablu khane ko milte laddu. Or public kaiti happy birthday to you. You ask the children. The, every child has got only this dream. When I am grown up, I will not ask mommy and daddy. Then I will drive my own car. A child is never happy as a child. Because I is there. The teenager is the most miserable one. Because in teenager, I is slowly becoming stronger, concretized. Very vulnerable. See? Therefore, devotion means a devotee who has discovered freedom from I. That is devotion. You know what? The one who votes is a votee. One who doesn't vote, devotee. <laughs> he doesn't vote for the world. His mind is all the time in tune with the Lord. Therefore, when we are practicing devotion, while practicing devotion, this I should not be allowed to be born. That is important. Otherwise, you know, you must have seen in South India, there are two brands of, uh, you know, devotees. One are called as Ayyars, another called as Ayyangars. Ayyars are uh, horizontals and Ayyangars are verticals. <coughs> and there is no end to their strictness. Uh, we don't eat onion in our house. Outside we eat. <laughs> we are not like others. Get up directly from the bed without changing, taking bath, go directly to the kitchen. No. After we get up, we finish our bath and everything, then go in the kitchen and then we do the puja of the gas and then we start cooking something. First we offer to the God, holier than thou. See, friends, this I is the main culprit. This I must be dissolved. And therefore, how do we achieve this? That as a devotee, our I gets dissolved. And this can be done when we study what are the lakshanas, what is the lifestyle of 
a real devotee. That is the topic. One day one lady asked me, Swamiji, uh, when will I have God's vision? I said, what will you do after that? Tell me. No, 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 when will have you first tell me? I said, imagine I am God. Now you have my vision. What will you do next? So, I mean, you always joke. I say, this is serious. I am really God. <laughs> <laughs> what will you do? Oh, I will chant Lord's name. Then continue. Practice. Karo. Imagine that you are realizing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Guru, no? That is the problem. See, friend, this particular topic which comes in our scriptures. Bhagavad Gita, it comes in three places. Bhagavad, hundred places. Second chapter, twelfth chapter, and fourteenth chapter, Bhagavad Gita, this topic comes wherein they talk about, for the upper second chapter, they talk about a man of steady wisdom. Sita Pragya. One has to be steady in wisdom, not in posture. If you are steady in the posture and think that you are realized, then all the buffaloes in India are realized. <laughs> they are so steady postured that even if a truck comes, they keep on ruminating and look at them. Kya samaj rakha hai? <laughs> steady posture is not the ultimate. Steady wisdom is required. And when the wisdom becomes steady, what is the quality of lifestyle? That is explained in 18 verses. See? Then the second topic is in the 12th chapter, who is a devotee? Advesta Sarva Bhutana Maitra Karuna Evacha. There are 33 qualities given. These are the qualities which naturally start manifesting in a devotee. See, like a child, a girl, small one, when she starts growing, she comes to the age of puberty. That time, from outside, nothing is put in her body. What was the dormancy of her reproductive process that starts becoming mature, is it not? It doesn't come from outside. Exactly the same way. When the devotion, which is dormant in every one of us, nobody is a non-devotee. Everybody has love. When the love is dog words, it is called as attachment. It is called as uh, asakti. And when the love is God words, it is called as bhakti. And love we all have. See friends, only the direction of that love has to be changed from the dog to the God. That is all. And when we practice that, the 33 qualities, Adrishta, Sarva, Bhutana, etc., those qualities start coming up naturally in the devotee. See? You know how is, take one example. How is that happening when the love is complete? See? And when the love is complete, when there is no sense of otherness, then only the love is complete. So when our own tongue is beaten by our own teeth, will the tongue say, never mind darling, it happens sometimes, don't feel bad. No. And when the tongue goes and digs between the two teeth, that time the teeth don't say, okay, thank you so much, you are always helpful. No, because there is no sense of otherness. So there is neither appreciation nor condemnation because teeth and tongue may be separate, but they are one. Exactly this is what happens in the life of a devotee. Advesta Sarva Bhutana. We can hate somebody who is other than the self. Atmanastu kamaya sarvam priyam bhavati. 
we love ourselves unconditionally. A devotee is the one. See, Yasmin Sarvani Bhutani Atman Nevanu Pashati Sarva Bhutastam Atmanam Na Tatu Vijukupsati. He who is able to discover his presence in all and includes all in him, na tato vijugupsate, there cannot be any reason to hate anybody. See? Therefore, these qualities which are explained in Gita, etc., they are not meant for giving a certificate. Uh, Babaji, I understand you. Dadi Lambi Nahi, out. Next. <laughs> It is not for evaluating the masters. It is not for giving a certificate to the teachers. See, the purpose is the description of the wise people becomes guideline for the seekers to follow that in life. See, friends. Then it comes in the 14th chapter. Arjuna the question. That he who has transcended the three gunas, how does he live in this world? What is he? And Bhagavan Sri Krishna says, Prakasham cha pravrittim cha moha meva cha pandava na dveshti sam pravrittani na nivrittani kamshati. When is three gunas, Prakasha, Sattva guna, Pravrutti, Rajoguna, and Mohamevacha, the Tamoguna, whether they come or go, na dveshti sampradhutani. It happens with many of us. Sometimes, you know, you want to go and uh, chant the Lord's name, and your mind is not cooperating, and then you start becoming angry, frustrated, or the sleep comes, and we become so. I don't know why do I get sleep anywhere as if for meditation. Na dveshti sampravruttani and na nivruttani kamshati because he has already transcended the three gunas. See, friends. Therefore, here in this topic we will study who is a devotee according to Bhagavan Sri Krishna and who is the one who is liberated devotee and who is not yet liberated. This is the topic which Bhagavan Sri Krishna spoke to Uddhavji. See, Bhagavan Krishna has been talking to many people and before he concluded his Leela, he spoke to Uddhavji. And Uddhav is none other than the um, representative of Bhagavan Krishna. In Badri Narayan temple, if he had gone some time, there the main vigraha is that of Lord Narayana and six months it is worshipped by the human beings, six months worshipped by the devatas. So that time the uh, Utsava Murti of Narayana is none other than the Uddhavji. That Uddhavji's Murti comes down to the Joshimat and there it is worshipped as Bhagwan Narayana or Krishna. Therefore, Buddhaji is, you can say, representative of Bhagavan Sri Krishna. To that Buddhaji, Bhagavan Sri Krishna tells. This is the last message. And this is last message for all of us. It is said when somebody is concluding at the time of going, he generally doesn't tell lies. Therefore, when somebody is dying and that time they come and take the, you know, recording, uh, oh, whom do you think who has killed you? Oh, me? You know, the President of the uh, United States killed me. It can't go waste. So, it is the last words of the Lord before he concluded his Dila. Therefore, it is the most important thing for all of us to know. Sri Bhagavan Vaja Baddho Mukta iti khyata gunato mena vastutaha gunasya maya mulatva name moksho na bandhanam First Before we talk about bondage and liberation according to Bhagavan Krishna he says that these two things 
बॉन्डेज एंड लिबरेशन दे फॉल इन द परव्यू ऑफ द थ्री गुणाज इन अमृत बिंदु उपनिषद देर इज वन मंत्र वॉट इज से देर इज मन एव मनुष्याण कारण बंध मोक्ष बंधा विषयासक्त मुक्त निर्विषय स्मृत इट इज द मैंड अलोन वेन इट इज प्रॉपेलिंग टुवर्ड्स द वर्ल्ड बंधाय विषयासक्त वेन इट इज अटैच अट्रैक्टेड बाय द वर्ल्ड थिंग देन द सेम माइंड बिकम द कॉज ऑफ बॉन्डेज एंड मुक्त निर्विषय स्मृत when the mind is no more entertaining any objects or anything in this world the same mind becomes the means for liberation therefore this bondage and liberation they fall only in the purview of matter or purview of three gunas name vastutah essentially i am not either bound or liberated the be attentive one of the most important thing to know attachment is an illusion nobody is attached to anything or anybody in this world we simply say that i am attached we are not see how let's take one or two examples one elderly person with really retired when i went to their place he must be about 78 not out brigadier or something like that so when i went to his place he said how many how many good news so his wife scolded as usual let him come inside he don't understand anything i don't know who made him brigadier <laughs> so i was i said mama thank you for saving me from the firing of your husband so i mean i don't know he just doesn't understand anything I said, "Mama, that is very true. If he had understood, will he marry you?" <laughs> <laughs> I had to play tabla and danga together. Then only the music comes. It can't be one way. <coughs> Then he said, "Okay, Swami, you know, listen. What is that? You know, good news. What good news is old age, Swami Ji? I have stopped smoking." Now be attentive. When a person smokes, he enjoys, but the real joy happens when you stop. See, when you receive me here, what was the mantra? Na karma na na prajaya dhane na tyagi na ke amritatva mana shoho. The real freedom is the freedom to renounce. See, and that is the real joy. So when a person stops smoking after 20, 30, 40 years of smoking, see his joy. He is so happy. I really stopped. Now I don't smoke. See, therefore, the real bondage or liberation is only in the mind and only in the purview of the three gunas. Namey vastu ta ha. We are essentially not attached because attachment is illusion. Take example. See, the thumb rule is: illuminator is never influenced by what is illumined. This is thumb rule. You must have studied Panchadashi. I was told here you are all the uh, great masters in Vedanta. So when I was coming up, I was you know my heart was going inside, coming out like this. <laughs> Therefore, I started with devotion. You know, devotion is for ignorant people. You know. I want to be ignorant. So, in Panchadashi, this topic comes that the light that is called a Natak Deep Prakaran. This light in this this is a drama only. Natak means drama. Therefore, people from Karnataka are really spiritual. <laughs> they are only doing natak. They go before the Lord and they do natak. Bhagwan also knows. It. Therefore, all gods have a smile on their face. Malum hai. So, in the 
said chapter uh, Nathan Deep, the light is illuminating the dancer, the musicians, the accompaniment, the audience, everything. But whether it is a discourse or it is a disco, it makes no difference to the light. Now apply this principle. Whether I am seeing the red color or yellow color or dark color or blue color, does it make any difference to the eyes? No difference. Ears, whether it is the Lord's name or it is a filmy song, whether it is your glorification or it is an abuse, the hearing ability doesn't get influenced. Therefore, it illuminates every kind of sound. Similarly, the mind illuminates every kind of thought, good thought, bad thought. Mind is neither good nor bad. Thoughts are good and bad. And both kinds of thoughts come and go. Why they come and go? Because mind is not attached to any thought. Come to the last point. See? Consciousness supports, illuminates waking, dream, deep sleep and samadhi. See? Mattaha Smriti Jnanam Apohanancha Bhagavad Gita, 15th chapter. See? Sarvasya Chaham Rudhisanni Vishtaha Mattaha Smriti Jnanam Apohanancha I am in the heart of every being and because of me, from me alone, Jnanam waking, Smriti dream, Apohanam, their absence, deep sleep, and Chakarat Samadhi. Because of me, all these things are happening. But in the waking experience, I do not become a waker. In the dream experience, I do not become a dreamer. In the deep sleep experience, I do not sleep. In the Samadhi experience, it never begins, never ends. Because I support all of them, but none of them touch me. When they don't touch me, how can I be considered as in bondage or not bondage? Nami vastuta. Therefore, baddho mukta iti vikhyata gunataha nami vastutaha gunasya maya mulatva. And these three gunas, it is maya mula. They are the three expressions of this maya paramatma's divine power. <coughs> What is Maya Shakti? Let us understand in short. Maya Shakti means whenever knowledge is expressing through limitations and those limitations are taken to be the ultimate, that funny experience is called as Maya. For example, our eyes can see only the vibhyor spectrum of light waves. Our eyes cannot peep beyond this violet on the one side and the red on the other side, the light waves. Beyond that, eyes cannot go. And if we say, no, only the seven colors alone are real and there are no more light waves thereafter, then it is the influence of Maya. And why it is Maya means what? That which appears but which is not is called as Maya. Now when it is not, how can it disappear? It is simply an appearance. Therefore, all the three gunas, only Maya Mulatva, Nami Moksho no Bandhanam. And therefore, never was I ever bound, never I am ever liberated. You know, it is something like this. Take him for example. Sugar cane never suffers from diabetes. <laughs> what is the reason? That is the reason why Bhagwan is not in bondage. The cobra, you know cobra? In Bombay language, is a cobra means coconut the Brahman. That is what they say, I don't know. 
So this cobra never suffers from the venomous poisoning. He never the fire never suffers because of the heat. See, therefore, this Maya Shakti of Paramatma is the one which is supported by him, but it cannot influence him. Therefore, I am never in bondage, therefore, no botheration for liberation. This is the ultimate truth of a devotee. And when you know this, then apply it in your day-to-day -day life and try to find out. See? One example. There was a couple and they had a child, a son. And then the father had an idea that, hey, today is his birthday, we'll give him a surprise. What is surprise? Evening when I come from my work, I'll put on the tiger skin on me and a tiger mask and after I knock the door, you ask him to open and then I will run. And he will be frightened and it will be great fun. If the husband is happy, wife cannot be happy. <laughs> so what she did, she told her son. <laughs> Evening, when your daddy is coming, he is going to do this thing. Okay? Okay, mommy. And poor husband, husbands are always poor. That poor husband, he came in the evening with all the preparation and with that excitement. So he knocked the door and then he was on his knees. And when the child opened the door, he said, Aww. And the child went and sat on the tiger and <laughs> So, it was a surprise for the husband. <laughs> now the husband was surprised, the father was surprised. He said, Veta, how come you are not afraid? Mommy told me. <laughs> See? So when the child knew that this is just a drama, will he be ever afraid? In the same manner, Bhagwan knows this is a big drama going on. There is nothing to be serious about anything in this world. All spiritual life is be happy. That's all. Okay. Spirituality doesn't mean you become so serious that you forget uh, what Japa was doing. <laughs> that is not spiritual life. Therefore, Buddhist Maya Mulatva Nami Mokshona Bandhanam. Try one mantra I'll give you. Every day when you get up, after you finish your things, stand in your own place. Don't go any distance, wherever you are. Lift one leg about eight inches and say, I have nothing to do, put it down. Then the right leg. Again lifting. I have nowhere to go, put it down. I have nothing to do. I have nowhere to go. Try it. You feel so relaxed. <laughs> you begin your day. Oh, 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 oh. Are you amra? Relax. <laughs> As if the whole world is on your head. And such people, they don't talk, they bark. <laughs> Relax. Therefore, after having recognized these bondage and liberation, both are equally stupid things. They are neither in bondage nor liberated. You are. That is the truth. Bondage, liberation is our own imagination. We only imagine, if I get married, I will be happy. One imagination. Second imagination. When I was not married, I was happy. <laughs> Both are imagination. See? And therefore, they run from here to there. But they forget, where will you run away? Wherever you go, there you are. 
You can't run away from your sin. Therefore, once this is understood, then you will stop doing spiritual practice. Then thing will start happening. Because you are not there anymore. The culprit. See? Then, Shoka Moho Sukham Dukham Deha Patishya Mayaya Sapno Yatatmana Hakyati Samsritir Natuvastavi. Then we come to know that Shoka Moho Misery, somebody died, or you just watch this thing, friend. This is what is called a spiritual life. See? When somebody dies, the person who is alive, you listen to his dialogues. Don't get carried away. What's the dialogue? Oh, what happened, you know, uh, now what will happen to me? I have to take care of this thing, you know. He had just left like that. He was always like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fun, you know. One of my friends, he married a Chinese girl. I used to go to their house. She's really good. She was really good. And, um, you know, it is said, I don't know because I don't have any wife. Um, they say the best wives are Chinese wives. And the worst are American. Indians are TV. <laughs> so, after marrying for maybe two years or so, for some reason or whatever, maybe she suddenly died. And when I came to know, I went to visit him. Maybe after 10 15 days. And he was so miserable. Swamiji, you are a Swami, tell me why did she die? I said, yeah, look here now, she's died over now. Come out, you have to live your life. No, 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 unless I get a satisfactory reply from you, why you become Swami otherwise? You satisfy me. Why did she die so early? I said, I will talk to you. My conditions are two. No discussion and no argument. Agreed? When I say something, the topic should be concluded. No further stretching the topic. He said, okay. I said, look here, Chinese man, jada tikta nahi. Keep on frustrating yourself. Accept the things, friends, as they are. Then you are simply singing that bhajan. Jehi bhi dera kiye va bhi bhai dera Useless. Live at a zero complaint level. Then you are a devotee of the Lord. See? We have complained about everything. See? In the winter we complain about cold. So Bhagavan said, never mind. I'll give you heat. Then summer we complain about the heat. Bhagavan says, never mind, I give you rains. Then in this sense, we complain about rains. Bhagavan says, isko kuch bhi do, he is complain box, forget about it. Therefore, God doesn't listen to us. See, friends, a devotee never complains. Like uh, a painting never complains to the artist. We are his creation, except as we are. Therefore, shoka moho sukham dukkha, and Deha Patishya Mayaya, all these are only in the purview of the Maya, the Gunas. Nobody can be all the time miserable. You cannot be. In deep sleep, at least you are not miserable. You may make others miserable, but you will not be miserable. See? In deep sleep, we make others miserable because of the snoring. See, when the person went to the doctor and said, Tasha, I snore so loudly that because of my own snoring, my sleep get disturbed. <laughs> now what do I do? I am fed up about it. He said, no problem, go and sleep in the other room. <laughs> so these are only Sukha, Dukha, Shoka, Moha, Deha, Pati, these are all only till you are awake. Then, example given, sapno yatha atmanaha khyati, like in the dream. See, in the dream if something happens, we don't suffer because of that unless you are a child. I always remember this dream of the child. 
the child uh, got up in the morning and crying, kay, 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 non-stop. So the father got angry. And he said, you are like your mother, right in the morning start crying. What am I? <laughs> so the child said, Papa, Papa, in the night, you know, I had a very bad dream. What dream you had bad? I have failed in the examination and started crying. So the father said, even in the dream you cannot pass. <laughs> How much you pass actually? <laughs> it's different. So as the achievements and failures, joy and sorrows of the dream do not touch us in the waking in the same manner, he who is awakened from this waking dream, he is a devotee. See friends, that is the meaning of devotion. In the relative world, there is no problem which has an absolute solution. In the absolute reality, there is not a single problem which needs any solution. See, the only way is to get out of this mess of relativity. Sapno yatatmanaha khyati samsruti natu vastavi And therefore, again born and died and this is all fun, it has no meaning. Nobody is ever born, nobody ever dies. Tell me, do you have the experience of your birth? Nobody has. See, once I had an opportunity to visit a maternity home for some reason, and then to that nurse I asked, I said, you know, Mama, everything is over, now for my general knowledge, because I am a Swami, I must know everything. <laughs> when the child is born, you people tell that born at, you know, uh, 2.28 midnight or a.m. I agree, I am not already, it is for my knowledge. Suppose there are 20 of them in a queue, dada dada one one coming out. So are you taking the queue to... How do you decide exactly what time who is born? She said, you know, look here. If we tell somebody is born at 2.30, nobody believes us. So we say, not 2.28. And on the basis of that bluff, your Kundalini is awakened. See, nobody has the experience of birth, nobody has experience of growth, and nobody has experience of death, and therefore nobody has experience of absence. And yet we are afraid. A devotee is not afraid of death. Marne ki baat kya hoga? All old, therefore, you know, youngster, children, they ask genuine questions. Elderly people only genuine complaints. No question, only complaints. Once I was talking to a you know, college, school children, class 10, 12, like that. And naturally, when you talk to the youngster, teenagers, the language is different, the topic is different. And then after that, I told, now look here, I was talking to the students. Questions only from the students are welcome, not from anybody else. Start. One elderly man got up. Swamiji, I have a question. Keep with you. Next. He got so angry. And tap, 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 wait. Afterwards, when I was sitting with the principal for a cup of tea, I said, please call that teacher. He got angry with me. I will ask him to pardon me. He gave it. I said, sir, I did not answer your question because it was a wrong question at the wrong place. That was not the time to ask that question, therefore I did not reply. But I had not even asked a question. How do you know what was my question? Still anger was boiling. I said, your question was, sir, what happens after death? Is it not? How do you know that was my question? I said, from your face, you are not to me. Those who are asking question about death, are they living? <laughs> Think. See? One youngster, he came to see me in Bombay and um, he said, I want help. I said, I never give money. Next topic. <laughs> no, not money. 
last 10 years I am thinking of committing suicide. Yes, I yes, understand your point. Come, see that building. My building is only, you know, very small and I am only on the fourth floor, so there may not be confirmation. But you would, that building is 46 story. Go on the top. From there, die. I guarantee you will die. If you don't, I'll stand there and eat. Go. No, 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 you are making fun of me. I said, there is no need. You are self-sufficient. <laughs> now tell me, a person who is thinking of committing suicide for last 10 years, was he living? <laughs> See, if you are a devotee, you will never talk about death. Recently, where it happened? Vrindavan. One lady, I was there hardly for a few hours. In that one lady came. And the moment I looked at her face, I said, my God. I understood in Vrindavan there are gopis, well dressed, and she was a Judeal brand. My prarabdha, what is it? Always, a devotee is always well dressed and well addressed. How you dress and how you address tells the quality of your life. See? Very important. So she came, Swamiji, uh, before dying, how to remember God? I said, first of all, you tell me when you are going to die, <laughs> then I tell you. No, that is what they say in Bhagavad, that Ajamil said only once Narayan and he went to the heavens. What about me? I said, you will go to hell. Why? Because after saying Narayan, he died. <coughs> now you say Narayan, he is still alive. <laughs> See? After saying Narayan, there is no gap. That was the last thought. thought. <coughs> yam yam vapi svaran bhavam tajatande kalevaram. See? Whatever is the last thought, that is your blueprint for the next life. In Bhagavad only the story comes now that Jad Bharat, he was a king and he handed over everything. He went to the forest to do tapasya upasana and he fell in love with his baby deer. And baby deer, baby deer, when the deer became grown up, naturally it will go in his own company. Who will stay with the oldly daddy See? And when the deer has ran away with the, in their own company, these Buddha worrying, what will happen to my deer? He has never plucked even the grass and I used to feed him. I used to give him milk also with a bottle and everything. Now what will happen to him, my deer? <coughs> and died. Next life he was born as a deer. Is it not? Now those who are having dogs. My doggy, my doggy, my doggy, my doggy, my doggy doesn't go even to bathroom without me. What a love! <laughs> and doggy, 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 and one day my doggy. Uh. <laughs> Last thought. What is next life? Pom, pom, pom. <laughs> See, friends. Therefore, if a thought about death comes in your mind. By listening to the news about anybody's death, you are not a devotee. Very powerful. Think of living, not dying. See? But our problem is, Ab ji ke kya karenge? Such people, they don't die also. Tragedy is that. <laughs> So, na jine ki tamanna hai, na marne ka irada hai. Kuch to karo. Therefore, sansruti, ratu, vastavi, birth, death, etc. These are all only stories. Don't get carried away by all that. If you just think coolly, you want the scriptures want, we should become self-oriented, not self-centered. We are self-centered. And therefore, to make us self-oriented, what the scriptures do? They give us such answers so that we become responsible for our life. Normally the question comes, Swamiji, I don't know, other people's wives are so good, you know. 
Why my wife is so terrible? What sin I have done? Look here, beta. This is not your sin in this life, but in the last life. What I have done? See, last life she was your wife, and you are tortured her that time. And therefore, she again came in this life to take the revenge as well as the interest. And for that, she has invested. What she has invested? Karwa chauth. <laughs> Seven lives, choding you know? We are the descendants of Savitri. <laughs> therefore, now behave properly with her. Otherwise, next life again she will become more terrible. <laughs> now see, what is the meaning? Meaning is, before this body was born, you were there. In this body, you are there. When this body will be dropped, you will continue to be there. Therefore, you are a continuous, unbroken presence. This is the moral of the story. But instead of understanding this way, the same thing. Marne ke baad kya hoga? Come to cognize this, this is what is the meaning of devotion. Okay. Otherwise, you know, um, I have, you know, taken food on a god, she know what will happen. You will go to hell, straight. <laughs> Don't get carried away by all these things. Therefore, vidya vidde mamatanuho vidhi uddhava sharirana moksha bandhakari arte maya yame vidhirvite Vidya and Avidya, the knowledge and the um, um, ignorance or incomplete knowledge, they are leading to the embodied for the bondage, for the liberation and bondage. So when we are under the influence of the Avidya or the incomplete knowledge, we are in bondage. And when we know the truth completely, there is no bondage, there is a liberation. And therefore, both of them are nothing but the play of my own maya. In essence, there is neither bondage nor liberation. See, friends, hold on to this. We have to go nowhere. We have to achieve nothing in life. Just be yourself. Wherever there is a movement, the world is created. When there is no movement, the world disappears. In deep sleep, one event happens. Entry in the deep sleep. Thereafter, no event happens. So, no world. When the same thing happens during the waking, you are at peace with yourself. Neither talking to yourself, nor talking to others. Mind is still, but not sleepy, like the mirror. In that experience, we come to discover. Never there was any bondage, nor there is any liberation. You have not done japa, you have not done pranayam, you have not done charity, you have not studied scriptures, yet this experience of yours is abiding in the truth. Even if you are asked, kindly define this experience. You will not be able to say. Because in this experience, 
experiencer is not born. A devotee of the Lord is in this experience 24-7. Then we come to know Yogarato va, Bhogarato va, Sangarato va, Sangavihina, Yesya Brahmane Ramate Chittam Nandati 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 Eva, Bajagovindam, Bajagovindam. This is that. Vidya Avidde Mamatanu Vidhi Uddhava Sharirinam. These are my bodies. Be attentive. Gold says, wedding ring is my body. The gold says, the earring is my body. Body means where we discover the presence of the gold. See, the cause is always established by looking at the effect. Therefore, the world is the effect, I, you, the jiva is the effect. So when we look at the world, when we look at the wedding ring, we think about the gold. When we look at the earring, we think about the gold. Then Bhagavan says, Vidya Vidya, in bondage I am, in the liberation I am. Mamatanu, they are my bodies, and Bandha Moksha are they. So the Avidya is the one who is keeping us in bondage, and Vidya is the one who is liberating us from the bondage. And what is that liberation? Come to discover that we were never bound. See? <coughs> A great saint wrote in his Bhajan, <coughs> that by the grace of my Guru, I have crossed the river of transmigration. And I was so happy. And in that happiness, I just wanted to thank my Guru. So I looked behind to thank him and to see the river of transmigration, Bhavanadi, that I have crossed. And when I looked behind, neither there was Guru nor there was any river that was ever crossed. See? This is the ultimate. Here, Bhagavad 
सेज एक मम अंश जीव से हे महामते बंध अविद्या अनादिर्विद्या च तथा इतरा द वन रियालिटी अलोन इज एक्सप्रेसिंग इन टू वेज वन वे ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन इज सफरिंग एंड बॉन्डेज अदर वे ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन इज नो सफरिंग एंड नो बॉन्डेज द सेम रियालिटी दिस इज द क्रक्स ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट वन सेल्फ there are two words one is jiva second is jivana no means not there is no jiva there is only parmatma but this has gone so deep in our system that when a person dies then the soul goes out you know like a flame if you are a yogi it goes from above if you are a bhogi and rogi it goes from below when the soul goes from below it goes into animals when it goes from above it goes in the deva loka etc and then you must have seen also in that meditation they have this dvd you know that body is lying down and then the astral body slowly comes out and it is connected with a blue cord not blue tooth blue cord and then that astral body is going here and there and we get so enchanted by that see friends this all is at is the play of mind mind when disappears what remains is pure consciousness in between all these are modifications of the mind it has nothing to do with the truth when this is not understood then we get many seekers they ask this question maharaj ji please do something like what should i prepare for you tea or coffee no no not that way then what way earlier you know i used to see the lights etc in my meditation last few days i am not seeing the lights what should i do bulb change karo please <laughs> lightning meditation <coughs> that is not spiritual practice you will get lost in that therefore ekase mama amshasya jeevasya bandhasya avidaya anadi vidaya cha tatha itara when we are under the influence of the experiences and become experiencer we are born in bondage when we are going through some experience and do not precipitate as experiencer then we are liberated see how simple it is very simple not difficult then our mind is like the mirror reflects everything rejects nothing at the same time retains nothing our own being how do we experience in this experience of our own being there is no experiencer born see so these are the two when experience is associated with experiencer it is called as like a state of bondage when experience is not associated with the experiencer it is the state of freedom or liberation same thing with action karma without karta is freedom knowledge without knower is wisdom see wherever there is karta doership karma happens friends ma karma phala hetur bhu bhagwan says in second chapter 
don't become the cause of creating karma phala. How the karma phala is created? Kriya, action plus essence of doership is equal to karma. So when you don't have to become the cause of creating karma phala, means what? Don't remain as a doer. So let there be karma without a karta associated. See? Like you know, when we are taken food on say Ekadashi by mistake, we feel bad. Oh God, today I have taken rice on Ekadashi, you know, what will happen? Oh God, save me. So, nothing will happen, straight away, non-stop light to hell. <laughs> okay. After taking food, do we ever have that notion, don't disturb, digestion in progress. progress. Like people do in meditation, you know, they put a food outside. Meditation in progress, take a detour. And then it's a Konaya. <laughs> See, therefore, when we take food, that time I is involved. I have taken food, etc. But why digestion, nothing is involved and I am digesting, it doesn't happen. <laughs> digestion happens without a person who is digesting. And therefore when you have got a constipation, it is not a merit. And when you have a dysentery, it is not a, you know, sin. Kya ho gaya, dysentery ho gaya, maha paap. No. <laughs> because I is not associated there. Therefore friends, all the spiritual practices, Coming to this point, are we creating experience or doer? Atha patnasya muktasya vailakshanyam vadavite viruddha dharmana ataha sita yoho eka dharmani. Now I shall tell you these two types of uh, expressions. One who is in bondage, other who is not in bondage. And then we will come to know that the one who is in bondage is only one and the one who is not in bondage is also one. In fact, both of them are not. Only Paramatma is. How it is, what it is, we will see in our next episode. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnamudachare Purnasya Purnamadaha